Thank you for joining us for this regular board meeting of the Board of Trustees of Santa Clara Unified School District. It is Thursday, May 25th, and it is 5.02 p.m., and I'm calling this meeting to order. We will start with a roll call vote of trustees. Trustee Canova? Here. Trustee Gonzalez? Absent. Trustee Lieberman? Here. Trustee Muirhead? Here. Trustee Ratterman? Here. Trustee Ryan? absent and I am here. So we have five trustees here with Gonzalez and Ryan currently being absent. We will now have our introduction of the interpreter. Good evening board. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Angélica Benítez. Mi compañera Verónica Adams y yo vamos a ser las intérpretes en español de esta noche. Bienvenidos a la reunión de la mesa directiva. Esta reunión está siendo transmitida en el canal en español de Zoom. Para escuchar esta sesión en español, oprime el botón que dice interpretación en su pantalla y seleccione el lenguaje de español. En ese menú también podrá seleccionar la opción de silenciar el audio original en inglés. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will now have our Pledge of Allegiance led by student trustee Anika Bose. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Face the flag, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you so much. We will now have our district mission and vision statements read by Trustee Lieberman. The mission of Santa Clara Unified School District is to provide equitable, engaging, and innovative educational experiences so that each student thrives in a global society. Graduates of Santa Clara Unified School District are resilient, future-ready, lifelong learners who think critically, solve problems collaboratively, and are prepared to thrive in a global society. Thank you. 
We will now review and accept our agenda for this evening. Do Move I have to a approve Lieberman? Second, Robert. Thank, Thank you. We have a motion from Trustee Lieberman and a second from Trustee Ratterman. Are there any comments or questions? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Student trustee votes. That passes five to zero with student trustee votes also voting yes. We'll now, I will now read our guidelines for public comment at the board meeting. The Board of Trustees has a policy on civility. Policy 1310.1 on civility states, this policy promotes mutual respect, civility, and orderly conduct among district employees, parents, and the public. This policy is not intended to deprive any person of his or her right to freedom of expression, but only to maintain to the extent possible and reasonable a safe, harassment-free workplace for our students and staff. In the interest of presenting district employees as positive role models to the children of this district, as well as the community, SCUSD encourages positive communication and discourages volatile, hostile, or aggressive actions. This district seeks the public's cooperation with this endeavor. We will now have public comment on closed session agendized items. I have one slip from the public. Uh, when you come to the podium, please turn on the microphone. The green light indicates the microphone is on. You will have two minutes to speak. At the end of two minutes, please return to your seat. If you have additional comments, you may email the board. The member of the public who has turned in a comment slip is Margie Waisaki. Hi, for those of you who are unsure, I am Margie Waisaki, president of UTSC. As you move into closed session, I want to take just a minute to discuss a difficulty that may come up. It is unacceptable that it has taken over five months of verbal and written requests to meet with district staff to write language to support co-teaching. Over five months. This teaching practice is, as you know from my prior reports, supported by UTSC and benefits all students when implemented carefully and with structures in place. Time needs to be spent defining co-teaching, setting foundations, and giving the teachers doing the work sufficient time to review it for next year. The delay we face now has caused anxiety and frustration, not only for teachers, but I would hazard a guess also for our secondary site principals who are wrangling with master scheduling. Please hear this. These delays are the sole responsibility of the district, not the teachers and not UTSC. Let's stop kicking the can down the road, complete the work before the end of the school year, which, as you know, is a mere four days away. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public in the audience who would wish to address the board on a closed session agenda item? Um, any hands raised on the Zoom? Okay. The board will now go into closed session. In closed session, the board will discuss item B1, public employee discipline dismissal release. Item B2, public employee appointment management principal Brawley Elementary School. B3, Public Employee Appointment Management Vice Principal, Santa Clara High. B4, Conference with Labor Negotiators, Agency Representatives, Gary Waddell, Jose Gonzalez, and Mark Scheel. Employee Organizations, UTSC, CSEA, AFT, Unrepresented Employees, and Management. And five, Public Employee Performance Evaluation. Um, Agency designated representative board president Vicki Fairchild, title superintendent. We anticipate being back in open session at six o'clock for a series of recognitions. Thank you.
Thank you. The board has returned from closed session. Thank you for joining us. Um, we will now have our introduction of the interpreter. Good evening, board. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Verónica Adams. Angélica Benítez y yo seremos las intérpretes en español de esta noche. Bienvenidos a la reunión de la mesa directiva. Esta reunión está siendo transmitida por el canal en español de Zoom. Para escuchar esta sesión en español, oprima el botón que dice interpretación en la parte inferior de su pantalla y seleccione el idioma de español. En este menú también puede seleccionar la opción de silenciar el audio en inglés. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will now give our report from closed session. For item B1, the board received information. For item B2, the board received information. For item B3, the board received information. For item B4, the board received information and gave direction. For item B5, the board discussed. We will now go on to recognitions. We have several of you here today, tonight for recognitions and we're thrilled to have you join us um, this evening and are grateful for all that you have done to make Santa Clara Unified such a wonderful place to be. So I will turn the time over to Dr. Gary Waddell. Thank you, President Fairchild. Uh, it's an honor for us to have an opportunity this evening to recognize uh, a number of groups and individuals. We always like to do that, especially this time of year as we're wrapping up the year. And we would like to start out with our Difference Makers. Uh, our Difference Makers program recognizes staff and community who support our district's core values. Those are students first, integrity and ethical stewardship, connected families and collaborative community, equity and social justice, empathy and respect, and world leading and future ready. Difference makers are nominated by site leadership teams and labor association leadership teams on a quarterly basis to a selection committee comprised of individuals from classified, certificated, and management employee groups. Difference makers are recognized before the Board of Trustees as they are tonight, where they receive a certificate of recognition and a difference makers pin. Uh, special feature stories will be released through district-wide publications and social media after the announcements. All of the winners and their principals are here with us in the room this evening. Difference makers, when I say your name, I invite you to come stand at the podium with me while I read aloud your recognition. We'll then invite you to pose for a photo with me, the Board of Trustees, and our um, uh, in, in front of the dais. I now invite our trustees and our um, to the floor to stand in front of the dais. Ms. Rico, we don't have any other representatives this evening, do we? Okay, thank you. And we will begin this quarter. First, uh, we received 15 nominations in five award categories, certificated, classified, community, group, and high school student. Here are our difference makers. In the category of certificated staff member, this quarter's difference maker is Amy Magonia from Wilcox High School. Amy is being recognized for honor embodying our core value of equity and social justice. Congratulations. We believe in bringing out the full potential of every student and staff member. I have to embarrass you a little bit first. Okay. <laughs> Through our commitment to equity, access, and inclusion. We are passionate and unwavering in our belief that we can make a positive difference for every child if we embrace diversity, acknowledge our interdependence, and exemplify the courage to reflect continually on our personal and systemic biases and make decisions that disrupt systems of oppression and injustice. On behalf of the school leadership team, Principal Gonzalez said, Amy has subtly yet strongly and consistently been an advocate for equity and social justice. She has shown support for our students by embracing the Best Buddies partnership between her students and others around the campus. This club benefits students in regular education at least as much as those with special needs. It facilitates a better perspective and appreciation for everyone at Wilcox. Amy also works with our Gay Straight Alliance, again, supporting connections among our students to create a safer and more tolerant campus for so many. 
Amy leads and facilitates our Charger Wellness Staff Collaboration Group and leads the staff in mindful minutes at the beginning of each staff meeting. Amy was a trailblazer in getting our United P uh, Unified PE program off the ground. Amy is retiring this year, and we will miss her tremendously. Thank you, Amy, for everything you've done for Wilcox and SCUSD. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's see you go. Get a photo. All right, in the category of classified staff member, this quarter's difference maker is Jessica Gonzalez from Westwood Elementary School. Jessica embodies our core value of integrity and ethical stewardship. About that core value, Congratulations. Um, we, be we believe in upholding our fiscal responsibility through integrity and ethical standards. We gain high levels of trust and foster, foster collective responsibility and cross our organization through effective stewardship of our resources and consistent, ethical, transparent, accountable behavior and actions. On behalf of the school leadership team, Principal Gaffari says, Jessica is nominated for this recognition for two reasons. The first, as our classified union representative, in this role, she strives to support our classified staff in resolving concerns and making Westwood a better place. She tries to listen to all voices and help to come to a mutual, uh, to mutual ground, remaining as neutral as possible to get all voices heard. For this, she definitely embodies the core value of ethical stewardship. She also embodies every single one of the core values in her role as a special education paraeducator. Most importantly, she is student first. She knows the students she works with, with on a deep level, their home life, their friends, their strengths, and their weaknesses. She works tirelessly to support our upper grade students in completing projects, reports, math assignments, and getting organized. She is caring, empathetic, and above all, respectful of each and every one of them. She gets along with all teachers and other support staff and is always willing to cover in whatever capacity is needed. We definitely wish we could clone her. Congratulations, Jessica. Thank you. All right, in the category of community member, this quarter's difference maker is Walt Van Zandt from Wilcox High School. Walt embodies our core value of excellence through continuous improvement. We believe that achieving high performance and full potential for both the organization and the individual comes from a relentless commitment to excellence and the courage to adapt, change, and innovate based on results. We believe in fostering a growth mindset by defining failures as opportunities for learning and continuous improvement. On behalf of the school leadership team, Principal Gonzalez says Walt has demonstrated excellence through continuous improvement even in the last years of his coaching tenure. During the heightened restrictions of the pandemic, he found a way to coach a cross-country team. Not long after that, in 2022, the Wilcox cross-country team won the Santa Clara Valley Athletics League Sportsmanship Award. Also in 2022, four Wilcox cross-country runners were named to the all-league team. 
Walt was the head track coach at Wilcox for 20 plus years and the distance coach for track since 1985. He has served on committees at the league and CCS levels. He's been named a CCS honor coach. Conservatively, he has probably coached close to 4,000 athletes during his close to 40 years of coaching track and cross country. Former Wilcox athletes talk about the impact he has had on their lives and that they enjoyed how he always had a realistic goal for them, no matter their ability. Many say they continue to run now. Walt is an icon at Wilcox. His dedication to the sport and to our athletes is unmatched. Congratulations. All right, in the category of group, team, or organization, this quarter's difference makers are the Wilcox National Art Honor Society Student Club at Wilcox for embodying our core value of connected families and collaborative community. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, can you hand that to one of you? <clears throat> We believe that community action is essential to achieving our vision and having a positive impact on student outcomes, including health and wellness. We serve as a catalyst for, uh, for a call to action with parents, families, and community. Through support, engagement, involvement, and collaboration, we leverage our multiple perspectives and collective genius, develop better solutions, and deepen our shared commitment to success. On behalf of the school leadership team, Principal Gonzalez says, this group's work demonstrates several of the core values of F SCUSD, connected families and collaborative community, world leading and future ready, and students first. The National Art Honor Society chapter at Wilcox participates in many activities throughout the district, such as face painting for elementary schools and organizing anti-hate campaigns at Wilcox. This year, the students heard that Peterson Middle School did not have an art teacher, so they decided they wanted to create an opportunity for those students to have some art exposure. Having an opportunity to be creative is pivotal for growth and fun, of course. The NAHS, NAHS members made contact with a teacher at Peterson, so they had a place to meet and a teacher on campus to be a liaison. From there, they coordinated with the teacher to create a set meeting time so students could meet once a month after school. They made flyers and a Google Classroom for the middle school students to join and get information. They met once a week to create art activities they thought would be engaging. They sought a donation from the Santa Clara Schools Foundation and were awarded money to create art kits for the students who attended the workshop in February. And they had their first meeting with 24 students attending. The group created a collaborative community through leadership and took initiative that put students first. They expressed empathy for the fact that students at Peterson did not have an art class and created the opportunity to have exposure uh, of various art skills and materials. They are leading a younger generation of artists and acknowledge how important art is to the community. Congratulations. Yes. We'd like to also recognize their art advisor, Ms. Heather Lawton, and invite her up. Okay. Morton, Morton, Heather Morton. Sorry. All right. Well, come over this.
And finally, in the category of high school student, this quarter's difference maker is Andrea Garcia Talavera from Wilcox High School. I think Wilcox is well represented this evening. <laughs> uh, Andrea embodies our core value of empathy and respect. We believe that empathy, the ability to understand and share feelings of another, is crucial for valuing diverse perspectives, effective collaboration, problem solving, and leading change. We believe that everyone has value and deserves to be treated respectfully. On behalf of the school leadership team, Principal Gonzalez says, Andrea de demonstrates several SCUSD core values, empathy and respect, excellence through continuous improvement, and world leading and future ready. She is a senior who arrived in the country from Mexico at the start of her junior year. When she enrolled, she spoke almost no English and worked very hard to currently be an advanced ELD. Congratulations. As her English improved, she began to advocate for her community. She saw the struggles of the newcomer population and how difficult it was to be successful in school and in a new community. She was extremely concerned when she found out about the changes in the English learner program that took place this year. She worked closely with the site leadership team to create a club that would help newcomer students befriend those in mainstream classes and attend school events. She helped organize the char charger closet where students who cannot afford to buy clothes can stop by and get some school attire. She is constantly talking to the school personnel about what the teachers and students can do uh, to advocate for those less fortunate. Her goal is to study at university in order to help individuals at the border. She wants to support marginalized communities and has stated, started that work by welcoming newcomer students in both academics, as well as the social aspects of being a high school student. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 
Tonight, we're th and congratulations to all of our difference makers. We're very proud of you and appreciate all that you're doing to make a difference in our district. So, thank you. Moving on to our next recognition. Tonight, you may have noticed some uniformed guests in attendance. We are grateful for our partnership with the Santa Clara Police Department and want to take a moment at the end of this school year to pause and give our partners some special recognition. Santa Clara Unified takes seriously the daily responsibility we have to ensure the safety and well being of students and staff, and we can't do that alone. This vital task is not possible without the unwavering support and collaboration we receive from the dedicated individuals in law enforcement and emergency services who contribute to and support our safety plans. The Santa Clara Police Department has been an essential pillar in maintaining safe and secure teaching and learning environments across our district. Their commitment to protecting our community and schools, fostering trust and upholding the highest standards of professionalism is commendable and appreciated. Each day, they demonstrate unwavering dedication, courage, and selflessness to ensure that we feel safe and secure. There are specific members of the police department whom we would like to give some special recognition to this evening, and I will call them each up in just a moment to receive a certificate and for me to share more about the specific role they've played in our partnership. What I'd like to highlight first is the police department's dedication of time and resources this year to bolstering our safety plans around the run, hide, fight trainings and drills at each of our schools and also for their own teams. While we wish there was not a need for such protocols, we are grateful that our local police departments have prioritized this work in our communities and are true partners in every sense. In addition to annual review of our school safety plans, and other joint proje projects. This year, every school site in Santa Clara Unified received run, hide, fight, active intruder training and participated in a practice drill. Additionally, the police department has used one of our closed sites for their own staff training and drills. Uh, and we are very grateful for the partnership that we uh, enjoy with you every, every day. So we're very, very appreciative. And now we'd like to invite our guests up to be recognized. And first, I'd like to begin with probation officer Alejandra Lopez. Santa Clara probation officer Alejandra Lopez is a 25-year veteran of law enforcement. In the past several years, she's been assigned to SCPD um, Department Juvenile Division, Diversion Program. Here, she works with students and parents and provides guidance and resources for a successful transition into adulthood. With her positive attitude, she has steered dozens, if not hundreds, away from a revolving door in the criminal justice system. For each student, she does not see this as a challenge, but as an opportunity to help students and families learn and grow from bad decisions. She is a great resource, not only to the police department, but to SCUSD and the community. Congratulations. Next, I would like to recognize Community Service Officer Taylor Carpenter. Who I have to say was the star of the show this morning at our Safety Patrol Awards. <laughs> uh, Taylor Carpenter has been with SCPD for 16 years. For the past eight, he's overseen the Safety Patrol program for all public and private campuses with fifth graders. Taylor also manages the Crossing Guard program in Santa Clara. He can often be found providing tours of the police department to students and taking part in career days on SCUSD campuses. He's also coached the girls basketball team at Wilcox High School for several years. According to Taylor, all the cardio allows him to eat whatever he wants. <laughs> in 2021, he was selected by the police department at the Santa Clara Police Department Professional Staff of the Year. Congratulations.
Next, we'd like to recognize Officer Scott Savage. <laughs> Officer Savage is assigned to the recruiting and hiring unit. During his time in the recruiting unit, he helped hire over 30 full-time police officers and dozens of professional staff, which included record specialists and public safety dispatchers. Some may recognize him from the run, hide, fight videos used for SCUSD active shooter response presentations. His video was instrumental in our trainings this year. In 2007, Scott won the Bronze Level Training Award from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security for his terrorism response training. In 2021, he won an International Police Instructor. He was International Police Instructor of the Year. We were very fortunate to have Scott customize a video for SCUSD. On May 29th, he will honorably retire after serving our community. Thank you and enjoy a well-earned retirement. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we'd like to recognize Sergeant John Terry. Congratulations. Um, Sergeant Terry is a 17 year veteran of, of law enforcement. His previous assignment includes being a member of the Special Response Team, also known as SWAT, and a detective in the Crimes Against Juveniles and Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. With his experience, John has educated dozens of families from victimization. You may recognize him from our Run, Hide, Fight presentation he provided on each campus and as the school liaison between SCUSD and the police department. The relationship between both agencies is unique and vital for our community, and John has not let us down. Recently, John started the Vigilante Parent Initiative, which educates parents about the dangers of social media and chat rooms. John has also participated in all campus career days, mental health education, and as an advocate for campus safety. Congratulations, sir. Next, we'd like to recognize Lieutenant Kong Fan. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, he could not, he regrets that he could not be with us this evening, but we wanna take a minute to recognize his contributions to the partnership as he has been an important liaison to us. Kong is a 25 year veteran of law enforcement. This will be his fifth year assigned to the community services unit. He previously supervised the DARE program, National Night Out and school resource officers. He is most proud of building and maintaining strong relationships with teachers and administrators. As the public information officer, he works diligently with our own Jennifer DeRico and photographer <laughs> extraordinaire to share facts and coordinate accurate and timely communications to the staff and caregivers in our community. Let's give Kung Fan, Lieutenant Fan, a hand. Next, we'd like to recognize Assistant Chief Waheed Kazem. Thank you, sir. <laughs> nice to see you. Lieutenant, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Assistant Chief Waheed Kazem is a 27 year veteran of law enforcement. Currently, he oversees the Investigations Division and Administrative Services. He's been an advocate, advocate of collaborating with the district and timely community messaging. As a member of the police department's communication team, he has a high urgency to ensure accurate information is shared with parents and the community. Over the years, Wahid has worked with teachers, school administrators, and board members to help us achieve the common goal of keeping our staff and students safe and our community informed. 
And I will say he's very quick when I have to text about a question, he responds right away. And I can't tell you how much that means when we're in a, in a crisis moment. He, is, he says he is honored to be recognized this evening. Congratulations. And lastly, we know the importance of good leadership, and we are pleased to recognize Chief Pat Nikolai. <laughs> Chief Nikolai is a 31-year veteran of the Santa Clara Police Department. In December 2020, he became the elected police chief for the city of Santa Clara. As a resident, Pat proudly raised his two children who attended schools in Santa Clara Unified. Earlier in his career, he was the Community Services Unit Supervisor, where he oversaw the D.A.R.E. program and school resource officers. Pat appreciates the relationship between the district and the police department and strives to keep our campuses safe. More importantly, he sleeps well at night knowing the district is in the good hands with the police department representatives like Waheed, Kong, John, Scott, Taylor, and Allie. Congratulations and thank you for the partnership. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you all. Uh, I, I, it's now my pleasure to call up uh, Director Karen Allard, who's going to recognize our first cohort of the Educature Preparation for Inclusive Classrooms or EPIC program. Two years ago, I reached out to the Santa Clara County Office of Education to begin an in-house EPIC program for paraeducators to earn their special education credential. We were thrilled that nine paraeducators choose to participate. These paraeducators attended 17 courses over the last two years, including Saturday mornings and during the summer months. All courses were taught by district administrators or Santa Clara teacher leaders. During the second year of the program, the paraeducators also completed an internship in addition to their coursework. Tonight, we would like to recognize these paraeducators who completed all coursework for our inaugural EPIC program. The EPIC program creates diverse, homegrown recruitment pipeline that addresses a critical shortage area of teachers who are credentialed in special education. These paraeducators know our students and have developed strong relationships in our schools. We are proud of their accomplishments and look forward to supporting their aspirations to serve the SCUSD community in new roles as special education teachers. 
Joel will now call up the following staff to be recognized for their commitment to the program and participation in the cohort. First, we would like to honor Sharmisia Bhattachara. Next up, Anuradha Kumar. Maybe she not made it. We'll definitely give her a certificate. Lily Mir. Byron Myers. Gilbert Ortiz. Lupa Mudra Patanabic. <laughs> and Jay Yin, if he was able to make it. He wasn't able to make it today, but we will definitely give them their certificate. Thank you again, board. Trustee. Okay, good evening. Well, it feels like it has not been an entire year since I uh, came to present a new student leadership structure for our school district. At our last board meeting, you heard from student trustee Anika Bose about how our year went and our talks and planning for next year. Uh, tonight, we are recognizing and celebrating our student senators and our student trustee. 
Uh, they helped us rebuild a district uh, level student leadership structure uh, as we return to a more robust program as coming back from the strictest pandemic protocols. These young people were elected by their peers to serve on student leadership at their school. And then those leaders met with Dr. Waddell and I in the fall to elect peers to represent them and their high schools at the district level um, as SUSD student senators. And they are our inaugural class. This is the first time Santa Clara Unified has had a student senate at the district level. In this work, they committed to meet with me and the student trustee each regular board meeting week to review our upcoming board agenda, ask clarifying questions, and give feedback to our student trustee. Together, we also discussed and planned for quarterly meeting agendas and activities for the superintendent student council. There's about 50 or 60 students from the middle schools and high schools that meet with us each quarter uh, to learn about, give input on, and plan the student engagement activities around our district-wide initiatives, such as our recent fentanyl and naloxone awareness campaigns that we carried out district-wide and that the students are um, planning and preparing for uh, their own campaigns next fall. I'd like to um, call up the following students to be recognized for their commitment and their contributions this year. And we will start with our student senator and student trustee who's already on the floor, <laughs> Anika Bose of Wilcox High School. One for your service as a student senator and for your service as a student trustee in the school district and a small gift from us. Congratulations. All right. I'm the photographer too. <laughs> Okay, I am going to ask at the end if you will all oblige me to take a group photo with all my senators for this year too. Uh, our next is a student senator Tanya Zaragoza Ataide from New Valley High School. Okay, next we have student Senator Scarlett Snowy from or Smiley, I'm sorry about that from Mission Early College High School. Okay. Next is a uh, student Senator Monique Jones from Wilson High School. I don't think Monique was able to make it tonight. We want to recognize her participation on our Senate. And then we have uh, student Senator Jason Liu from McDonald High School.
Okay, and then we have student Senator Matteo Maioli from Santa Cruz High School. Thank you so much to everyone we recognize tonight. It is uh, really overwhelming to think of all of the people that help in the schools. Just thank you so much. We will now go on to item E1, uh, report from our superintendent. Thank you, President Fairchild. Uh, it was a delight to join many of you this morning for the 29th annual, 29th annual Safety Patrol Awards at the Yak and at Cabrillo. Almost 500 safety patrollers gathered to celebrate their commitment and to let us honor them for keeping their schools safe. I was very proud of each and every young person honored for making their schools a better and safer place. And thanks to our partners at SCPD and the city of Santa Clara. We had good news at Pomeroy who applied for another garden education grant this uh, with the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority and recently received a grant of $64,580 for Pomeroy Sustainable Harvest and Investing in Nature Education Program. That spells shine. <laughs> this marks the second time that Pomeroy applied for and re uh, received a garden grant, demonstrating the commitment on building um, a, a program that nurtures the environment and sustainability. Congratulations to the Pomeroy community, Principal Keegan, and garden cooking STEM teacher, Audrey Hinton. I'm also pleased to provide an update on the equitable access through implementing Native Gardens Eating Project grant for Pomeroy and Scott Lane. After a rigorous evaluation process there, we're thrilled to announce that we have successfully navigated the grant review committee stage, which places us one step closer to securing funding to transform blacktop areas into vibrant school gardens at Scott Lane and Pomeroy. 
Uh, I had a great opportunity to visit Levi Stadium with Coban Lopez and Justin Prettyman of the 49ers Foundation, who shared many of the awesome educational spaces where they host students throughout the year and got to join some of our Wilcox girls who were attending a program the day we visited. Then last Saturday, I also had the great good fortune of visiting the SLI showcase at Cabrillo, uh, which was also occurring, occurring at Santa Clara High School, and was really blown away by the innovative, complex, and real-world projects that the students had been investigating and designing around. Kudos to the SLI team, as well as appreciation to the 49ers Foundation for their support and partnership. Uh, we had awesome visits to the McDonald High School Celebration of Learning last evening where students showcased their work. It was clear that McDonald is making strides with inquiry-based learning that is igniting student passions. And likewise, enjoyed visiting Central Park last week and seeing the culmination of their tiny house projects that wove together mathematics, engineering, design, and making, and a heaping dose of creativity. Kudos to the boys and girls and their teachers at Central Park. Our committees have been busily winding down their, their work for the school year and planning for the next. This includes our labor management partnership work, which has made major strides this year as we renewed our partnership and bolstered support of our site leadership teams. We recently held our second part, the second part of our orientation for SLTs, and we'll finish the year out at our final, final monthly district leadership team retreat on July, June 9th. We appreciate the dedication of all of those involved and are excited to get back together in the fall and continuing to work together to make a difference for all of our children. Our first graduation ceremonies begin tomorrow with starting with Mex in the morning and New Valley and Wilson Adult Ed in the afternoon and ending with Santa Clara and Wilcox next Thursday. It's going to be a celebratory and exciting week ahead. We're very proud of our students and particularly so of those graduating and moving on to their next steps in their lives and educational and vocational careers. Uh, we had a joyous celebration uh, this past Wednesday at the Employee Recognition Tea, which included honoring those who are retiring, those who have meet, reached major milestones in years of service to the district and our employees of the year. It was a fun and celebratory day, and we wish heartfelt congratulations to all of those honored. And that concludes my comments. Thank you so much, Superintendent Waddell. Uh, we will now have reports from union presidents. This week is CSEW, Classified School Employees Week. We have over 170 classified job descriptions in Santa Clara. Secretaries, clerks, bus drivers, kitchen assistants, custodians, occupational therapists, technology support desk, special ed technicians, <clears throat> excuse me, vocational and workability technicians, warehouse workers, wellness coordinators, behavior technicians, bookkeepers, payroll technicians, one professional learning specialist, 14 different classifications of paraeducators, library media assistants, LSATs, painters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In sum, more than 1,000 classified employees keep everything running, downloading, connecting, food being served, plants growing, phones answered, students transported, and bathrooms cleaned, doing so with pride and dedication. And I have slideshow here with some of our many classified employees from across the district. So my report tonight is dedicated to all of them. I'm even going to forego my Giants update. Our main chapter spotlight member of the month is Hilda Zuniga, a technician in our facilities department. These are some of the words that have been said about Hilda. Hilda represents everything our department is and strives to be. Hilda's work ethic and commitment to serving Santa Clara Unified is unparalleled. She sets the tone for all of us. And Hilda is known for her kindness and helpfulness, which make a massive difference and help create a positive 
and supportive environment for everyone. And Hilda is a valuable member of CSEA and deserves recognition for her hard work and contributions. And she does all of this in the background without expecting any recognition. So congratulations, Hilda Zuniga, our Chapter 350 Spotlight Member of the Month. Susie Cortez, Parent Involvement Facilitator at our Family Resource Center, uh, known as the FRC. Um, I am proud to announce that Susie is the first member of our chapter to receive her bachelor's degree through CSEA's free bachelor's degree program. She received her degree in business and administration with a focus on management. She accomplished that while taking care of her family, baking, I have to say, wonderful and tasty treats for some of our CS events and recognitions, and providing excellent support to the families and students at the FRC. I'm looking for more great things from Susie. I will highlight one more member, Lori Garmany, a paraeducator at Don Callajohn School. She was a recipient of the San Francisco 49ers Foundation's Follow Your Bliss Award, created for educators who exemplify a commitment to their students, families, and communities with purpose, passion, dedication, and love. Lori personifies all of these qualities as she supports some of our most needy students. I wish I had enough time to mention each and every classified employee and the difference that each and every one of them make in our Santa Clara world. Unfortunately, I would need days, not just hours in order to do so. So with that, I will conclude my report by saying that all of them are deserving of our respect and our, our our respect, and that we truly are indispensable, inspiring, and invincible. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Ms. Swaisaki. Should know that by now. Good evening, President Fairchild, Dr. Waddell, and the Board of Trustees. Over the course of the past few weeks, I've been reflecting upon our work over this school year. There have been so many successes. First and foremost, we have a new collaborative superintendent in Dr. Waddell, who has been instrumental in helping our district heal. Equally important this year has been the time and energy put into building strong, strong foundations in our relationships, relationships built on trust, focusing on the needs of our students, and supporting one another to complete the hard work to the best of our ability. And then I reflect upon next steps. As we move into the new school year, I'm hopeful the district will put significant energy into overhauling the joint committees. The purpose must be crystal clear and purposeful. The right people must be at the table and the next steps must be transparently defined. Final decisions must reflect the work of the committee for there is nothing worse than death by committee. And trust me, we all know when a matter has gone to committee, never again to see the light of day or when a decision made by the committee and shared publicly is different than the decision the people in the room actually made or recommended. Over the course of this school year, UTSC has worked hard to reach agreements with the district about many difficult, difficult matters. Our contract is strong and gains clarity with every iteration. When used as a roadmap, it helps both parties to avoid conflict. We insist all departments in our system review and follow the contract. We need to get out of the mindset that the contract is an HR matter. It's not. It's a document for all of us. As we move forward, I hope we have a better process in place to write and create necessary MOUs in a timely manner. I'd like to again address community schools program and the planning grant we received of $100,000. In keeping with board policy 9320, 
UTSC would like to officially request the school board convene a study session in early fall of next year regarding this program. This is an amazing opportunity, and I'm hopeful we can learn about these together. Convening a study session would not only help build background knowledge for everyone, it could also provide for the presentation of various strategies and ideas the district could use from districts who've already been doing the work. Let's not reinvent the wheel. A group of us will be attending the Empower Summit on June 16th, and I'm really hopeful this will help us ground our work in both a common understanding and mutual commitment to the work. Joe, could you put that picture up for me? I leave you tonight with a picture from one of our sites. This is a picture of staff getting ready for a site celebration. What I love about this picture is the representation it provides of teamwork and collaboration. Look at all the different roles represented. You see the cheerleader and you see the operations folks. And someone always has to lay on the table to hold the tablecloth down. Sometimes you're the cheerleader and other times you lay down on the table, but all work together toward a common goal. It is our way to move forward. Again, I thank you for your hard work and for the hours you have spent supporting our children. I hope all of our teachers and staff have a great last week of school with our students and a restful summer break. This concludes our UTSC report. Thank you. We will now have our public health update by Mr. Shield. Good evening. I'm happy to announce that county wastewater data continues to show that COVID rates are continuing to hold. At home rapid COVID test kits for staff and students to have on hand for personal use over the summer months have been delivered to the sites and they're in the process of being distributed to all staff and students if it hasn't already occurred on some campuses. As we wind down the school year and look to the next school year, we are hearing from our state and local public health departments that we can anticipate COVID guidance for the 23-24 school year in July. Our COVID team will need some time to be oriented to any changes, develop any plans, and communicate any necessary transitions in our protocols and our resources. We anticipate that this will be our final public health update for the school year, but we will continue to keep the board and public updated as new guidance is released. Please be on the lookout for any relevant communications for the 23-24 school year. This concludes our report. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will now have public comment on unagendized items. I have not received any slips for from members of the public who would like to comment on something that is not on the agenda. Are there any hands raised? Okay, we will move on. We will now we are now on items H consent items regarding human resources. These are only voted on by um the elected board members. Motion to approve, Rotterman. Second. No, go ahead. We have a motion from Trustee Rotterman and a second from Trustee Gonzalez. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes seven to zero. We will now have our other consent items. Motion to approve, Rotterman. Second, Ryan. We have a motion from Trustee Ryan. I mean, Trustee Rotterman and a second from Trustee Ryan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Student trustee Bose. That passes seven to zero with student trustee Bose also voting yes. We now have action item J1, resolution number 2333, affirming June 2023 as LGBTQQIA plus Pride Month. Move to approve, Ryan. Second, Lieberman. We have a motion from trustee Ryan and a second from trustee Lieberman. Any discussion or comments? This will be a roll call vote as it is a resolution. Trustee Canova. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez. Yes. Trustee Lieberman. Yes. Trustee Muirhead. Yes. Trustee Ratterman. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. And I vote yes. Student Trustee Bose. Yes. That passes seven to zero with student Trustee Bose also voting yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. We all now have action item K1, appointment of the vice principal for Santa Clara High School. Second, Rotterman. We have a motion from Trustee Gonzalez and a second from Trustee Rotterman. We will now hear about who will be appointed from Dr. Gonzalez. Good evening, board members, Dr. Waddell and Ms. <clears throat> Burrell. It is my pleasure to announce Maria Teresa Posas as the vice principal of Santa Clara High School. Uh, Teresa is a graduate of Santa Clara High School. She also attended Santa Clara University where she received her BA in Spanish with a minor in ethnic studies. She received her single subject credential in Spanish and her master's of art teaching uh, English as a second language from the University of San Francisco. Teresa is coming to Santa Clara Unified from Cupertino Union School District where she has been the assistant principal for the past eight years. Some of Teresa's experiences as an assistant principal include providing leadership to the professional staff in determining long and term and short term uh, range plans for the school, uh, assisting in the planning and implementation of school plans and organizational procedures for health, safety, discipline, uh, maintaining effective community relations, assisting in communicating uh, to parents regarding the educational program and assist the principal in carrying out a program of community relations. Thank you so much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes 7-0. We now have action item K.2, the appointment of the principal of Raleigh Elementary School. Motion to approve, Rotterman. Second, um, second, Ryan. We have a motion from Trustee Rotterman and a second from Trustee Ryan. It is my pleasure to announce Danielle Metz, she will be, uh, she joins us from San Jose Unified School District, where she has been the principal of Simmons Elementary School for the past five years. Prior to that, she spent 23 years in Union School District, where she taught grades TK through sixth. She served as the president of the teachers union, was a principal for four years, and also worked at the district level in learning and innovation. Danielle is originally from the Philadelphia area where she was born and raised, but has called the Bay Area home since 1995. She received her bachelor's degree from Philadelphia College of Textiles and Science, currently known as Thomas Jeff Jefferson University, and a master's degree in education from Millersville University. She is excited to start her new position as the principal of Raleigh Elementary. Thank you so much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes seven to zero. Thank you. We now have action items from the business office, action items L1, 2, and 3. Uh, Mr. Shill will be presenting, and I would just request that Mr. Shill give his recommendation for each of those items. Uh, good evening. So L1, the first item, we have a request from an organization called the Phoenix Physical Arts LLC, also doing business as the Phoenix Volleyball Class. They're requesting a waiver of the maintenance fees only associated with uh, their facilities use request. Uh, it is the staff recommendation that this be denied. So I'm just curious, is there any public comment? I have received no slips on public comment. Do we have anyone on the Zoom? We have no one on the In Zoom. In that case, a motion to deny the request. Rodderman. We, we have a motion to deny the request from Trustee Rodderman. Do we have a second? Second, Muirhead. We have a second from Trustee Muirhead. Are there any questions or discussion? Trustee Gonzalez. Just uh, do we have any, uh, as far as numbers of uh, the participants, is it like 50% of our students or zero? I mean, do we have any idea? Uh, less than 5% of the participants are students of our district. Thank you. Any other questions? Trustee Ratterman? Just, just one comment. I believe you sent us some information to queries that were made prior to the meeting that the cost for this program is $500 for, a, for 10 lessons. Yes, and this is a for-profit group. They charge uh, $500 for 10 classes per participant. Thank you. I just want to make sure right, that right. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Student trustee votes. That passes. Oh, any opposed, sorry. 
I thought I heard it unanimous. Um, that passes seven to zero with student trustee Bose also voting yes. Uh, next item is L2. Uh, the next item is uh, also a request of a waiver of maintenance fees from a group that they refer to themselves as the No Stars Group. This is uh, not an organized group, but mere, uh, but a group of adults who get together to play basketball. Uh, they are also waiving or uh, requesting a waiver of the maintenance fee only. Um, because this is adults, the recommendation is to deny the request. Trustee Ratterman. Yeah. Um, so my understanding is that this is a senior, a group of seniors that get together. The amount of money that they're requesting a waiver on is about five hundred dollars. Does that part of it I have right? Uh, I can't confirm that they're seniors. I can confirm that they're adults. Okay. Thank you. So my approach has been uh, in the past that uh, the community as a whole is what we're here to serve. And we take care of our students first, our school district first, and then second, um, the uh, community. In this case, this looks like something that is going to be beneficial to a portion of our community. It's relatively small cost, and they help pay for those facilities. So I'll make a motion to uh, to accept the waiver of $504 or whatever the amount is, $540, excuse me. We have a motion and a second. Trustee Muirhead. I just want to make a comment that <clears throat> it seems to me that um, where the previous one was a for-profit group and they're charging fees and they can raise their fees to cover these kinds of expenses. This is just a group of guys wanting to play some basketball and um, I think that that makes a distinction uh, between the previous one. It's they're not trying to make money. They're not trying to, you know, charge fees. They just want to play. Okay, Trustee Canova has a question. They have already said it, but with some participation, how many adults were we talking about? Uh, they did not give us a number of adults that are participating. They also did not confirm. Uh, that they are residents of the district either. Um, so we don't have any data that shows that uh, a majority of them are residents of our community. They did not pro they did not provide that information. And perhaps Andy's thinking the same thing. Is this time sensitive? I, that that's important information for me. If the, if they're residents, that has weight to me. If they're not residents, then that changes the dynamic for me. Miss Healy, could this wait? This could wait. Yeah, uh, Trustee Ryan. Yeah, I was well. I had that you brought that up. So yeah, I would like to get that information before making a decision. Um, and then I was just, did you make a recommendation on this one? The current staff recommendation is to deny the request. Right. So yeah, I, I, I think as I would like to wait and have them come back and get more information about whether it's community members or not. Um, yeah. Uh, Trustee Radaran. Yeah, I did have one other question. I just wanted to clarify. Um, they are paying some money towards this. I believe they've only asked for the $60 a waiver. Yes, they're agreeing to pay the facility use fee. Okay. So they are they are not requesting a waiver of all fees, only uh, the, uh, the maintenance fee. Thank you. Trustee Gonzalez. I'm not sure of the residents, which maybe we can get that information, but it does say in the attachment that they're a group of folks in their 70s. So. Yeah, I just I'm looking at my notes from earlier and I didn't have that information readily. So, so I, I would just I mean, if we if we had that information as far as whether there were residents, um, that would be beneficial, I think, to me. Um, and if it's not time sensitive, maybe we could bring it back. But um, also just taking into account also that they're seniors so if they're residents and seniors, which usually on a fixed income, I think uh, we can take, take, take a look at that. So since we already had a motion and a second, do we need to make a motion to bring it back, a priority motion to bring it back? Personally, I've, you can make a motion to do that. Personally, I'd like to just take a vote and see. And Because if nothing else, $500 is what we're talking about. How much staff time is going to be involved in taking care of this? I'd like to just dispose of the issue. Okay. So will you repeat the motion? Motion is to accept the request for waiver of $540. Okay, and we had a second. So all in favor? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, 
and student trustee both. And then we had, I was, I was going to abstain, I, abstain. I was hoping we would come back with it, which I, I, all against. I'm going to vote no today because I wanted to. Come back okay. Back. No. Okay. Well, that passes. Mm -hmm. Four to, four to three, four to two with one abstention and a student trustee vote is also voting yes. Can I ask that when staff get these requests that they create some sort of form that people fill out to answer these questions as, as part of their request for waiver so that, that we know if they're profit or nonprofit, what the what their ages are, if they're residents, all the, the things that we've been asking about for the last few days, it would be great just to have a form. Great suggestion. Thank you so much. Now let's go to L3. Uh, the last request is a request again for another waiver of maintenance fees uh, by an organization called the Industrial Volleyball League. I'm going to anticipate some of the questions. They are a for-profit entity. They charge about $680 per team. Uh, each team is made up of about five to six players. Uh, they are, um, uh, this is an adult only league. They are also requesting only a waiver of the maintenance fees and staff recommendation is to deny the request. Move to deny the request. Second, Rotterman. We have a motion from Trustee Ryan, I mean, Trustee Muirhead, and a second from Trustee Canova. Do we have any discussion or questions? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Student Trustee Bose? Any opposed? I didn't hear any. I heard you all say yes. So that passes seven to zero with student trustee bows also voting yes. We now have action item in dot one, instructional materials adoption of elementary school grades K to five designated English language development curriculum, Lexia English learning by my Lexia. Motion to approve, Rodderman. Second. We have a motion from trustee Rodderman and a second from trustee Lieberman. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Student trustee Bose. That passes seven to zero with student trustee Bose also voting yes. We now have information items. Uh, we are to the Williams Valenzuela quarterly report in dot one. There's nothing to report. Wonderful. We now have um, information item in dot two, the schematic design for the new Laurelwood Elementary School. It's just a name, we oh, so you're not, there's no presentation. We received the uh, information. Are there any questions? Okay, wonderful. Now we have a in dot three. This is a presentation of this from the sixth grade cohort of the digital classroom innovation. And this is a presentation. I think they thought they were presenting. We'd like to thank the architects who I believe came and thought they were giving a presentation, but I know they're happy to go home. Great job, guys. Wonderful, Mr. Ayala. Good evening, um, Superintendent Dr. Waddell, school board and community. Um, I'm here today to present on the innovation cohort that took place this school year. Um, I'm Joe Ayala, Director of Technology. We have Stephanie Rothstein, who is the um, Innovation EdTech TOSA. We have Amber um, from Peterson, and we have Danny from um, Don Kaljong. Of course, the clicker is not working. Okay. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, what we're trying to do is um, the idea, the concept of this was how do we spark change in the classroom? Um, well, this was based off of the Baltimore schools, the lighthouse model. The, the common idea is that you can't replace technology in every classroom with, you know, even in Santa Clara, 
we don't have the budget for that. Mark would get very upset with me. Um, but we, what we do is we want to focus on 15 to 20 core classrooms. And those become lighthouses for the school, lighthouses for the community that show and highlight the different changes and the different technologies that we are implementing. And the reason, so we wanted to do a change. We wanted to have an impact, but we also wanted to start with middle school. In a K-12 environment, um, we found that there was like a very nice opportunity in middle school. Um, we've, we tend to focus on elementary. They're cute. They're lovable. They're amazing. And high school counts. It matters. We're getting ready to send them off to their career or to college. But middle school is an opportunity that we felt was, would, a, would be a great place for us to start, to innovate, and to implement this change. So the the cohort model, the vision for this cohort, what really made it something impactful is that we combine technology implementation, integration, along with lesson design that our teachers created and professional learning and coaching that I was happy to provide. And so we'll talk through a little bit more about what that um, entailed. So one of the key in, in, um, incentives to our teachers, because why would they join us on this journey, is we wanted to make sure that they had a really cool technology. So we started off with an 86 ViewSonic television, an Apple TV, an iPad. We redid the classroom speakers and we provided a teacher microphone. And then the professional learning and coaching, there we go. The professional learning and coaching um, looked like something that I am really proud to have supported. So we had five in-person sessions together. We have two of our amazing teachers that are here that will speak next about that. Um, we also attended a conference together that's a, a really popular ed tech conference to support them. We had four virtual sessions and at those sessions, we provided really in-depth learning uh, and that I supported and we brought in um, others who could support on Google Workspace, Pear Deck, Canva, Cami, And then our final session actually was how to blend both technology with kinesthetic learning, getting students moving and making sure that we're being collaborative and connected in an environment that utilizes technology. One of the things that I am most proud of is that our teachers took on leadership roles within the cohort. So they themselves, we instituted what we called our light bulb talks, which were our, our each of our teachers took on a three to four minute a talk where they shared about something in their own classroom. They utilized the technology while they were presenting and they shared about a success. It could be on any topic that they wanted. And then they spoke to how that impacted student learning. And we found that the teachers really gravitated to those. And one of our teachers today will talk about one of the talks that she gave and the impact that that has had on the cohort. In addition, we provided an opportunity for cohort and school collaboration. We also did lesson planning design and feedback cycles that happened throughout the process of the cohort. And then I was lucky enough to get to mentor and coach these teachers, providing them with monthly opportunities where I met, went into their classroom, observed, provided feedback. And then we continued to do that um, in a model of a, a coaching cohort. And then I'd like to pass it on for our, the next part of our presentation. If you can move to the next slide. And Danny Corso, one of our amazing teachers is gonna talk to the teacher and student experience in her classroom. Hi, um, if I could duplicate you two and just have you by my side at every single time, like I would, because that's how amazing this cohort has been for me. Um, from the three lessons I created, um, it would probably have to be the medieval Japan stop motion video that we had. So students were taught about different topics surrounding the main idea, um, such as like Shinto beliefs, samurai training, geography, all, of course, part of the standards are um, really the historical guidelines, as they call it now. Um, and they had to choose out of a fishbowl. And that topic is what the topic was going to be for their stop motion video. I don't think I've ever seen my stu students in my 12 years of teaching be more so collaborative, creative about a project. I had no behavior issues. I, they were extremely focused, innovative. They taught me a thing or two about the iPad that was so generously given to us to kind of play around with. And it was just so cool to see something that they worked so hard on come to life. 
And we even had a movie party to celebrate their work at the very end. And the kids were just so excited to have this opportunity to create something that they never have been able to really kind of create before. Honestly, this year actually has been one of the hardest of my 12 years of teaching. However, this cohort was the saving grace of me not losing my mind. Stephanie and Joe helped me to renew my love for teaching and learning for myself. Being creative is a necessity for me, and it has been lost a lot due to COVID, and sure, with some of you and also with some of our students. And the effects really kind of put me in a, in a poopy situation. I was going to say it's just not fun. But this cohort allowed me not only to foster and cultivate creativity for myself and my students, but to be inspired by other teachers and leaders in the district. This was the only PD I felt that was the most meaningful and impactful that I've ever had in my teaching career. I can't tell you, like, I'm about to go, I, I am about to go into maternity leave, and I already have like 20 million things I want to do before I even have this baby, just because they've inspired me so much. And I hope it continues to spread in the district. And one other thing I wanted to add, which is also the microphones that we got, as a person of, who's hard of hearing, I wear hearing aids, it has been a tremendous help for my students who also have hearing issues to have that technology. So thank you so much for making it also an ability for me to create a classroom that's gonna cultivate all different kinds of students. Um, and I really, really hope that this can continue. So thank you, Stephanie and Joe too. Hello, Amber Watt, teacher at Peterson. Um, so you know me in terms of if it's technology, I had conversations with Joe before I was heading out the door as president. Sorry, Margie. Um, and I was super excited this. I'm a tech person. I love it. I think it builds equity for our students. And, and, and you also know I'm a data person. I've presented before to you about math. So I'm a data with me too. So if you could please pass down and I have enough for all, because um, we like to look at our iReady data and things like that too. Um, so I um, am not gonna talk so much about the student and projects, but really the impact as a teacher and what I feel that we can really impact others to move forth and have just the cognizant of like what we can do for our students and that effect with just small changes in and how we present our technology, how we utilize it in the classroom and then um, just build students capacity. So um, I evaluation year coming back into the classroom and we have an overall goal of focusing on our EL students. And, um, and then I joined this cohort. And so I thought, why not put that all together as part of my evaluation? And so what you're viewing now is the data, my collection of my classroom. And just to give you a little um, information about my the two classes I have. I might have a regular homeroom at Peterson and then I teach one class of Peterson Plus. So Peterson Plus is accelerated. There's a wait list to get in. We know the things about Peterson Plus. And so in my regular classroom, I have a gamut of readers from first grade level all the way up to eighth grade. I have a third of my class that is special ed. I have a third of my class that are ELs. So just want to give you that feedback because the growth that they made is amazing. So if you look at the data with me, I did a protocol, um, edge of protocols called Fast and Curious. It's something that takes 10 minutes of time. And this is, I shared different protocols in our cohort to kind of show teachers, this is what you can do. It's something quick and easy, and it makes a huge impact. So the first, if you look at the back page, which has, has period one and period two, so what you're looking at is I chose to focus on vocabulary. That is a key thing. If you look at Marzano's, if you look at the background knowledge, 50% of that comes from social studies or that capacity, right? And in this day and age, we're building students to participate actively in a democracy and be critical thinkers, right? We've already experienced the past couple of years and know that's a priority for us. So um, anyways, I chose that focus and I also chose to be able to compare data between two different groups of students and what the achievement could be. So as you're looking at this, you, if you haven't already noticed, um, period one is my regular homeroom, period two is my Peterson Plus cohort. And you can see my students are matching maybe not exactly, but they are keeping step with the higher rigor, higher academics based on this protocol that I'm using in class. So what students come in, they do a cold take on vocabulary. They haven't seen, I've looked for background knowledge. I look quickly, what do I need to focus on using 
quizzes and it's an app that we have in the district that we're utilizing and I can quickly see do I need to focus on this word can I move on do kids have background knowledge about that and so if you look at we'll just take geography terms the first two my kids came in knowing 79 percent of that for first period and they at left and the, the final 95 percent and that's an average class average that's not one student that's a class average and then for period two, which is my Peterson Plus cohort, they came in knowing 95, 94% and they left knowing at 99. With my regular homeroom, it took a few more days. Peterson Plus could do this in three to four days, but my homeroom, five days, but it's got built in equity. I don't stop until the kids read a certain level of expertise or understanding. And if you continue down geography terms two, my class came in at 62%, my homeroom, 84% average. Peterson Plus, 83% coming in, 96% average. My, my homeroom maybe not match exactly, but they are keeping par with the other class with just a few more days or steps or whatever they need to get there. So taking that, moving on the next step, if you look at my iReady data, this is my class. You'll see the top row is the baseline. And what is in the in my room? And so, if you look at the dark red, means three or more grade levels below. The light red means three grade grade levels. Sorry, grade levels below. The yellow means two, uh, one grade level below. I'm sorry, I misspoke. The light red is two grade levels below. Yellow is one grade level below, and green is like at level or above. So that's my beginning. That's September, or whenever we took it. And then the next row is our November. 117%. You might not be able to see all the digits, but you can see the growth of 117%. Now back into March, 350% growth. So this is something that is quick and easy. We can implement. I know that we're doing a lot of focus with our consultants, but I want to back Danny and just the support of Stephanie and Joe in terms of this has been one of the best PDs because I had buy into it. I created it for myself and now I want to share it with others and it's effective. And I just shared with my staff and they were like, wow, that's something I can do. And then even on the measuring on the unit test. So this is just this, the week that I implement it coming back five weeks later after I've taught Egypt, you know, um, ancient China, whatever it is, um, they're still maintaining that vocabulary at 80% or higher. So with that, I started to do more edger protocols. I've taught about 15 of them in my classroom now. And um, you can see the effects of that. And with any kind of return rate on homework or classwork, really, let's say, um, if I have anything that's not an edger protocol, I'm getting 60 to 70% of my homeroom returning their assignments. But when I do an edger protocol, I'm getting 80 to 90% of my students completing their assignments. They love it. And they wanted me to share and wanted me to let you know that when we do an Iron Chef, which is a jigsaw, really, um, they wanted to know they're a second language speaker. When Because I do Iron Chefs, and they have to speak about what they just they have to present to the class for only 30 seconds, they say they feel more comfortable talking in front of the classroom now because everybody just does it. They get, say their little spiel um, and present to the class, and then they move on. So thank you. So the next steps with this cohort, as we did, we um, the first year we uh, focused on the sixth grade. Uh, we want to continue on. We want to move on to the seventh grade and eighth grade. So it span over a total of three years um, with our focus being. So um, we're looking to have a cohort cycle. That's really what we've tried to do. So this first year, what you've heard from our teachers, we really worked on tech integration. What you really heard was that we focused on great pedagogy that the tech supports in the classroom. And so learning both how to use it, how to implement it and the impact that it can have. And then moving to year two, really thinking about how do we deepen that learning and understanding for both teachers and students and focus on classroom design and redesign and what needs to happen in that. And then for year three, supporting even more that initial cohort in becoming the leaders for our next cohort cohorts moving forward. So uh, our goal really is to continue to build the internal leadership and capacity of our teachers here and continue to help them to feel supported. And I just want to say that I'm so grateful to have been a part of this partnership and continuing that on is something I very much look forward to for next year. So thank you. And then one of the key things I want to say thank you to is um, 
as a technology director, I could quickly, easily get a quote, get a requisition, and get a purchase order. Um, but I can't do this alone. So I want to thank Brad Stam for greenlighting this project, Mark Schill for finding the funding with Debbie Jones, um, to making sure that this is a project funded in its first year, um, and then Karen Allard for helping out with the professional development side. So this was not just done with technology, but this was a true partnership across the board. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I believe the board will probably have questions or comments if that's okay. So um, Trustee Canova. Yeah, impressive list of the technology that you brought to, to bear. I noticed that um, Google Workspace, which of course is, you know, we all use it every day. But what caught my eye was Canva. I've used that platform before. I would imagine students would really love Canva. Can you speak to that a little bit? <laughs> yes, oh, our teachers could certainly speak to it too. We found that that has been the most popular of uh, our implementations that we have had here. It's as both a creativity and creation tool, but also helping students with uh, being able to communicate their ideas effectively. And it really, you name it, it can be done in Canva, both from movies, podcasting, having students create posters. We saw a variety, lots of the projects that our teachers presented on were created use, utilizing Canva. Um, and that implementation rolled out this year. And it has been from all the data that I have seen, and Joe can back me up on that, it has been the, uh, the highest growth in terms of impact and usage that I have seen both from a teacher and student side and at the district level. Thank you. I believe I saw Trustee Ratterman. Yeah. So this is a very exciting program that you've got. And whatever I say, I don't want you to take this wrong. Um, whatever, it, basically to me, there's a bit of a pilot program that you're doing. You're, you're exploring a, a pathway, et cetera. And it looks very exciting. It looks like you're having extremely good results. It also looks that you're like you've been very careful with implementation to make sure that students are benefiting from the process. So the question I have, though, is uh, coming back to an issue of equity, do we, and it may not be you guys that have the answer to this, it might be on this table, um, in terms of scaling this up and coming to a part where we say this is a really great, we should scale this up through a larger part of the school district, or it's really good for this particular I'll steal your word cohort. Uh, and so we could do that at multiple schools. So do we have any, I mean, I see the, the cohort cycle, but that's for this pilot. Do you have any idea or vision towards where this is likely to go as we move down the, the line? Yes. So um, um, Mr. Mark Schill has um, um, recommended and instructed me to work on a hardware device replacement. And with these cohorts, we're getting a lot of input from teachers in the classroom and seeing what's working and what's not working and kind of becoming a new standard across the board, just like we did at Ag News um, where at the McDonald, and that just like we will do with Laurelwood. But one of the key aspects of that is how do we get a replacement cycle? So now we're just not putting it in, but we can also replace it in the end. But how do we keep the cost low? Because one of the reasons why we chose an iPad is because it can replace the interactivity, like the annotation tools, but also can be a document camera as well. So how can we use different technology that has multiple functions? So we can keep the overall cost low. Um, another part of um, that aspect is we're looking at other areas that we can utilize this as. And then with the um, thanks to Mark Schill that we um, have now increased the technology budget to start to incorporate um, AV. That was something that was not a part of the um, AV, um, sorry, not part of the hardware replacement. We initially this board approved Chromebooks and then we moved over to staff, staff laptops and now we're looking into AV. Because what happened at times is a school would maybe um, provide five projectors when there's a need of eight. And so as we build this, what our uh, classroom in Santa Clara looks like, then we're able to then have a replacement cycle. And as new classrooms um, come online, as old projectors go down, we can start to build the infrastructures to support classroom models like this. Well, thank you. It's, it's exciting. Uh, I really appreciate the work you all have put into it. I like the fact you're putting pressure on Mark for replacement cycle on technology. You saw the big giant smile on his face. I think it's because we've had quite a few conversations about that. Um, so thank you very much. Appreciate the report. Any other comments? I would like to thank you. And um, we're just thrilled to have a presentation on learning. So this is this is wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good comment, President. Oh, okay, Trustee. So it looks like we're going up uh, 
to the higher grades, are we contemplating going down to the lower grades? So right now we have um, some newer technology being tested out at Central Park um, to see if the interactivity is better on the hand of an iPad versus the interactivity on a board, on, on a TV screen. We're testing that out um, in anticipation for the new model um, at the elementary level being established with Laurelwood. What we learned from Agnews, what can we improve, and then what are we gonna deploy in Laurelwood? But yes, and then, oh, sorry, and then another another test that, that might possibly um, be conducted as at Milliken. Milliken missed um, initial part of the last bond cycle. And so we want to make sure that their technology is getting upgraded as well. Yeah, one point that I just wanted to make is that I think one of the things that's really powerful about this example is it's not just about technology replacement. You can have very expensive tools that are being used just like the previous tools if it's not teachers innovating with each other and challenging each other to come up with new and exciting ways to use these tools. And that's really what's going to transform education, not just the technology itself. Well said. Oh, Trustee Muirhead. Well, that's kind of um, what was ruminating in my head is, so you've got these cohorts of sixth grade moving on to seventh and eighth, but um, is there a plan or what is the plan for moving to beyond just the cohort so that other teachers who are probably very envious of what's going on with this cohort can um, can get that same support, not just the technology, but the support behind it? We think we've hit on a, um, a very nice model of a change um, with PD and then with coaching. Um, so we would love to expand it, but you know we're working with um, Brad Sam and his team on what that looks like. So there's no no plan yet. Not at this time. You're just going to do the three grades and 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 see. Okay. If if I can expand on that, I think it goes back to also to what uh, Joe mentioned earlier. Also, is there is the component of using the technology and also having the technology in the classroom. And so with the expansion to other schools is also going back to what Joe talked about earlier is identifying the replace. What do we currently have? What's the, re the life cycle placement of what we already have and the replacement of that. So that way we can also budget to that for the actual replacement that will then allow us to build a schedule for onboarding the other schools simultaneously as to our, as we're budgeting towards the replacement of those items at the other schools and in the other grade levels as well. So we're trying to be very intentional about that uh, rather than um, necessarily having the technology, but not the PD is not ready or having the PD ready and not having the technology available. So really trying to develop that. And that really goes back to, um, you know, as, as, as Brad said, you know, <clears throat> we can have really expensive technology in the classroom, um, but it could also sit there and not be used. So we want to make sure that we have something in the classrooms that can be used effectively, and then also have everything move forward in a systematic way. And so we're trying to uh, align this as we move forward uh, and uh, budget it and plan it at the same time. Thank you all. Any other comments? All right, we will thank you. Thank you again. We'll now move on to 0.1, 2023-2024 uh, single plan for student achievement. This is a discussion item. Do I believe we all got that huge document? This is our annual uh, presentation and I just wanted to let you know that the principals are on virtually in case there were any questions. I, I, I see their names and I'm so grateful that they have all zoomed in. Are there any questions from the board on the single plans for student achievement? Trustee Gonzalez. Um, so uh, as our administrators at the site levels have looked at their budgets to try to make sure that they can address the needs and of our students. Um, and I guess this is a question maybe for Mark, but would they say that they've they've had the resources or are provided the resources? I mean, are there things that we need to work on to make sure that we help them, not help them, but uh, they have the resources that they need to 
to address the issues or concerns or proficiency gaps that exist. Are, are you looking for more money out there, Mark, to, to make sure that we can meet the needs? So, you know, that's a loaded question. Um, because I will say that we have provided in all the districts that I've worked in, uh, we provide a significant amount of discretionary spending to our schools. And so some of that is working with the sites to help them with budget planning and budget development and helping them through their plans. Some of that is um, sometimes things just cost more than what we think they're going to cost. And so we give them the original plan and allow the, the sites to go ahead and develop the plans based upon their individual needs. And then if they need more, then we collaborate with them on how to go ahead and close those gaps. And it might not be something that necessarily we can do this year, but having those conversations about how can we do it in the future years and have those conversations as we move forward. And so it's always a little bit of that, you know, push and pull and, and how we go ahead and solve those issues um, and then provide the resources necessary to meet the needs of students. Just a, just a quick question as far as... Uh... I know when uh, the LCF, LCFF was coming out with uh, Governor Brown, um, there was a lot of I stated, you know, we don't have to wait for them to address the, the different um, unduplicated accounts or, or different needs that, that maybe students at one, maybe Title I schools that might need more than, you know, at a, at a non-Title I school. So I'm sure that we're probably looking at that as well as far as we're not going to be equal, right? We talked about equity and mm -hmm. it doesn't mean being equal, so as we look at um, the different sites that, you know, we just keep that in mind that, you know, obviously some sites might need uh, more resources than others. And I'm sure you're probably working in that direction. We are, I, um, you know, Brad, Kathy and I have spent a lot of time looking at formulas that used to be in place and redesigning those more with an equity-based lens, as opposed to the equality lens that we've had in the past. And so, um, and I also want to throw kudos out to Debbie Jones, who's really been instrumental on that as well, and really trying to think through that work and how we can do it with a better equity lens. Um, I think sometimes what the problems are, um, and Kathy and I have a lot of conversations about this, that while we receive our funding differently than the state, we receive a significant amount of rules and regulations on um, funding to, you know, I'm not going to get on my soapbox, but I've said that the LCFF should be changed from the local control funding formula to the local compliance funding formula, um, because um, more often than not, there is very little, the, the amount of say that we have in those dollars is becoming less and less locally defined and more legislatively defined, and it's our responsibility just to comply with that. We're receiving a significant decline in federal funding as well. And we've been fortunate this year, we received a, an increase in Title I funding we didn't anticipate, um, but that hasn't always been the case. And so we are looking for when we do receive those funding sources um, that allow us to do some really creative and innovative things. How can we do it within the guidelines and the rules that the state provides to us? Um, but unfortunately, they're telling us more how we have to do it as opposed to allowing us to do things that are in the best interest of kids based upon our research. And so that's a little bit of that struggle that we're encountering as well. I was hoping she was going to agree when I looked over at her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Thank you, principals, for Zooming in. Please get off the Zoom now because you have better things to do. It's the end of the school year, and we're all trying to survive May. So thank you for Zooming in. Our last discussion item is a new job description, student and family engagement liaison. So this job description um, <clears throat> is replacing the current school community liaison. Um, by having this new job description, it opens the scope of work and it, it allows us to serve more students uh, of different backgrounds. So um, hmm. that is the main purpose of this of this uh, job description. There's currently one person in this role. We used to have two. Um, <clears throat> if, you know, if you approve the job description, it'll come back again. Um, we can reclassify the individual or, or post the position and then it can apply but that's uh, that's the purpose. It's at the same pay uh, range, which is uh, range 21. So it's not an additional. There is a difference in that this job description will be for 12 months instead of 11. Thank you so much. I have a question. 
Um, I was when I was looking at the job description because we're looking at a job description designed for historically underserved um, students and families, and I was wondering why we didn't put anything about this um, applicant being bilingual or having speaking we, more than English. We had that discussion uh, in the development, uh -huh. um, and it was it was difficult because we would have to pinpoint a specific language and that may change over time depending on the students we serve. So we decided that we could post that, we could use that in the posting um, in the moment of, you know, that specific language that could be needed, um, but not in the job descriptions because we may have a different uh, demographic of students with a different language. So could, so my question is, could you put something in the job description without identifying their language as we have preference to individuals who speak a language other than English? Um, can I just interject? We do also have a position that's called a bilingual community liaison, and we have two of those. So we also have that job description in place that actually identifies the fact that there must be another language other than English. Okay. All right, thank you. It's still something I think would be important. Trustee Raderman. Yeah, well, first I wanna give you compliments. I really appreciated you putting the, the uh, org chart in there. That made things much easier to understand. Just secondly, I, and I think it's just part of the catch-all that's in there, but you, one of the things you talk about is uh, ongoing contact with community organizations provide you know this type of thing where there's doing outreach mm -hmm. to the community and I think that's good we also have some people like Steve Neese that does does that formally do you see a change in those roles is this going to be a supplement to what he does or do, do you how do you see that taking place or is it just there because you hey look if this person's doing this we want them to be engaged in the community it's mainly uh, to allow this person to engage the community. If if the opportunity arises to make a connections with another organization, we wanted that it, that language uh, there, but it's not, you know, it's not taking anything from uh, Steve's role. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any other comments or questions? One of the things that I I just want to make sure that we're doing when we're looking at creating a position is that we look at the needs of the position and not if the qualifications of the person we want to get the job. And so, um, or it, I just, I, I'm just still, I'm surprised there's nothing about a second language. So. Um, well, can, just to that question though, I mean, if we just said preference for someone with a second language, it might you might have a person who has a second language, but it's not a language that we need. So I think that I understand yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, putting it in the job description, I think, or that not the job description, but in the posting. Yeah. Gets us to lets us focus on what we need at the time. Thank you. Okay, we are now to items from the board. It's uh, we have a report from the board. We'll start with Trustee Ratterman. Yeah, I'm not, this is an extraordinarily busy time. We've had a lot of fun events to go to. I've shaken more hands in the last week or two than quite a period before that. But I think one of the highlights was um, I've been able to, through an outside organization, Santa Clara Rotary, to participate in giving away $30,000 in scholarships. Um, and that was a very uplifting, fun type of thing to do. Uh, and something I don't, you know, people don't always get to. So I'm very fortunate that they've chosen me to help with that and, and was able to, uh, to hopefully make a couple people's day. Thank you. Trustee Gonzalez. So uh, as we shake a lot of hands this time of the year, I mean, it's, it's definitely, uh, one of the the high points, even though I would say that yesterday at the at the employee recognition, it's a, it's a high point as well. But um, but sometimes when you see folks retiring, it's uh it's kind of sad to see them leave or as they're they're going to uh to to retire. But um, I'm glad to see that many of them do come back, whether it's as, as you know 
um, what do you call it, substitute teachers or whatever capacity they may come back in. So I think mean, that's one thing with Santa Clara. It's it's usually you see, so even people, though people retired, you do see them come back and uh, whether it's in the leadership at site levels or at the, in the classrooms, they do come back. So it's, but it's a fun time uh, as we prepare for next week with the graduation and stuff. You know, definitely want to tell staff and our uh, associations that uh, you know definitely uh, take the time off needed over the summer. Um, you know, to rejuvenate and come back next year. Uh, you know, I know Doctor or, or, or uh, Superintendent um, Waddell has a lot of uh, work for us to do and things to work on. So, uh, but yeah, definitely uh, this last week it's a uh, it's definitely a push to the end, and uh, I'm glad that that we're all here uh, to see that happen. Trustee Ryan. Yeah, I was just thinking actually, you know, if in the week that's going to be coming up, shaking a lot of hands and uh, being able to see students finish off either, well, finish off their middle school years or their high school years and move on to their next step. I was just thinking about how two years ago, how I remember being almost in tears that we were able to come back in person in a very limited way to see each other in person again and how things are, you know, they're going to be able to celebrate in the way that we, we used to. So I'm excited about that. Also um, had a great time at the Math Pathways committee meeting um and michelle was there too so but i'm uh we're <laughs> oh and jen was there also as well to get ready because we're uh, as we talk, start to think about what um our community is going to want to know about about the recommendation um we talked a little bit about how the board will um get the results of kind of what the re what that committee is recommending um in august i i know i suggested that maybe we do it at a study session rather than a a meeting itself, because I think there will be lots of questions and comments, and we might really want to dig into um, understanding why this recommendation is coming forward and all the implications of it. But I really appreciated all the work of um, administrators, um, staff, parents, teachers, uh, TOSAs, who were all there uh, working together to kind of make the recommendation um, and develop the different pathways. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that come back in August. Uh, just real quick, something that uh, many of you know I'm very passionate about is Metro Ed and the work that they do. And their funding has been very troubled since 2013. And Albert and I have been watching this, but um, uh, AB 377, which was started by Al Marisucci and SoCal, and um, it's moved through the assembly very successfully. It's ready to go to the Senate. Uh, we were able to get a lot of co-authors to join it. Uh, Alex Lee joined it. Evan Lowe joined it a very long list throughout the state, Northern and Southern California joined it. Now that it's going to the state Senate side, we need co-authors there. Uh, we're very excited that State Senator Cortez has decided to co-author it. Um, I was able to reach out to Aisha Wahab and she too has agreed to co-author it. And I'm now in contact with uh, the staffs of three state senators in the Bay Area that are all considering to join it as co-authors. Uh, if it reaches the governor's desk, it will be the best opportunity that Metro Ed has had in a decade to stabilize our funding. And you all know how passionate I'm about what they do for kids. It's amazing what they do for kids. So I just wanted to report that. Yes, we got the graduations coming, which is a fantastic time of year. I always love that. Um, we just had a board retreat. Will we call that a retreat? We had our governance get together. Um, I was just going to say it was a very productive little get together. I thought it was one of the best ones that we've had in a long time. I wanted to say thank you to Jennifer. I've never seen recognitions work like clockwork. Oh my gosh. I mean, the place was packed and it was just from photo to photo to photo to photo. I mean, you're a professional. I mean, really. <laughs> just 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 incredible just 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 incredible and then um and then i also wanted to say also too going back several meetings but um but gary I was, I was hoping that at some point you'll bring another report about community day because i know you went out there and had a really good experience and i you know not every meeting but now and again i like to hear that and um enjoy the holiday okay Trustee Lieberman. Okay. Um, I try. I was trying to think of all the things I've been doing, and um, I think I've forgotten some. But um, I had my last day volunteering at Pomeroy uh, with Audrey Hinton in her cooking classes. Um, they made horchata from rice. Um, it, it, that has been such a lovely experience. I'm very, very happy for, 
for Audrey and for Principal Keegan and the entire um, staff there for their grant. Um, it's a, just a phenomenal program. I would love to clone her and get it in all of our schools. Um, they learn so much, the kids learn so much and it's, it's just phenomenal. Um, I attended the high school special Olympics at McDonald high school with, uh, president Fairchild. Um, that was hot and, um, but it was, uh, it was a wonderful event and president Wysocki was also there. Um, and, uh, that was, that was a really fun event. Um, we had our final meeting of the year of the LGBTQQIA committee, um, and I'm really looking forward to the presentation that will come in the fall um, from the committee. Um, and thank you to everyone who served on that committee. Um, it was really productive and a lot of really insightful and important conversations were had. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing things being implemented from that committee. Uh, last Friday, I attended a tour with Trustee Canova. He invited me to uh, Silicon Valley Career Technical Education Center, and uh, that was, it was the first time I had been there, um, and it was, uh, it's just a remarkable place. It really is. What they do there is just, it is, uh, it's life-changing for a lot of kids, and um, I, I wish we, I would like to see us encourage more kids to, to go that direction um, if they would like. Um, and then uh, last night, we attended the Celebration of Learning at uh, McDonald High School and saw so many kids earned badges um, and uh, and saw their presentations and they're just so talented and excited about what they're learning and it was just it was just a fun fun evening and I had churros which was made the whole night worth it so <laughs> thank okay, you okay trustee Lieberman student trustee Bose okay since our last meeting we had our superintendent student council meeting with all the middle schools and high schools we met at mcdonald high school we got to see one of their like collapsible wall rooms so it's really cool seeing that yeah seeing the tech in those rooms um we discussed the fentanyl and the loxone awareness campaign and we started talking about the next school year. um it was a really cool to see all these students one last time in, in such a collaborative space um, and soon the next student senate and student trustee will be selected. So that will be very exciting. Um, this is my last superintendent, I'm not superintendent, my school board meeting. I will not, unfortunately not be able to attend the next two, but I wanted to say thank you to everyone. Oh, this was such an experience and I learned a lot about board policy and a lot more than I thought I would, but <laughs> It is quite interesting. And there's a, yeah, there's a lot of things to talk about that no one, as from a student's perspective, we barely hear about any of, um, barely know all the behind the scenes, but seeing how much work goes into just making a school year successful is, is absolutely wild. But thank you to everyone. And I'm so pumped to maybe I'll join the live streams and watch them in the future and see, see how everything's going. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Trusting your head. So um, I wanted to highlight a couple of events that I went to that um, really excited me. One was the McDonald's Celebration of Learning. Um, was just so impressive that they it gave a chance for parents in the community to talk to um, all the students, not just their own, and hear about what they were excited about learning. And uh, for one student, it was computer science. For another one, they were really excited about their sports. They're, they did three different sports this year. And another one, it was their um, improvement in um, speaking. And the, just each one had their own unique perspective on their learning. And they all had, of course, uh, lots of tech to back it up. And, and I don't know if it was Canva or PowerPoint, or I'm sure it wasn't PowerPoint that so last year. But whatever it was that they were using um, to show their portfolio of learning, it was just powerful um, that they were so engaged and so excited about what they'd been doing, every single one of them. Um, and then um, I attended uh, this um, CSBA's delegate assembly this past weekend as a representative from our county. And I want to thank um, Dr. Waddell and his staff for 
um, answering some questions that um, were posed about late start. And um, it was really interesting to hear um, people's comments about that, and especially how the late start um, legislation came from the state. And we talked so much about local control, and this was an area where there was no local control. It was just mandated that we needed to change our start times for our kids, and it affected all of our schools. But the, the interesting thing I found from Delegate Assembly was that um, some schools School districts loved it. Some school districts hated it for the very same reasons. Um, some had to make a lot of adjustments. Some had to make very little adjustments. So um, it's a case where if districts had been able to make the decision themselves and not been mandated, um, we would have had a lot more districts happy about the decision instead of all the work that that had to go in. Um, so it, it it was a really, I think, a, a good discussion for our, um, the CSBA's research department about how to um, legislate, you know, how to influence legislation going forward, um, what's important for districts and what's not important. Okay, and I really enjoyed the employee recognition tea that we had. That was very nice. Thank you, trusting your head. Um, so last board meeting, I was not here because I was chaperoning um, the, helping to chaperone students at from Cabrillo who were performing at Disneyland, actually performed at California Adventure and they and participated in their imagination camp. And it was so awesome. <laughs> And what was so awesome was the kids were so excited. It's the first time Cabrillo had gone, that they had enough students to do anything like this, um, that they were so well behaved. I, I kept trying to remind myself, I'm with 13 and 14 year olds and they are all being good. They were ready on time where they went to bed on time. They, they were just so well behaved and we were just so grateful as chaperones that we did the, our only major issue was a student getting stuck on a ride then that shut down, but luckily they were in a safe place of the ride. It was a group of students. So that was really, it was just a fabulous experience overall. And it was wonderful to see those students just shine in that element and feel so proud of themselves. Um, there's been a lot going on, but I did want to highlight the three employees that were selected um, as employees of the year for classified Mary Day, for certificated Mike LaFleur, and as administrator Rob Griffin. And what I love about this um, ceremony, having attended as an employee, is when these individuals every year receive the award, it's because their peers have come together and nominated them. I heard through the grapevine, Bowers did another song, composed a song on behalf of Mary and wrote all these glowing things because they are so grateful for this amazing school secretary. Um, the, they probably could have written a book about Mike LaFleur. In fact, I felt like I read a book up there about Mike LaFleur who is just a phenomenal um, counselor and has been for years at Wilcox. And then um, we all are grateful that for some reason, Rob Griffin is in our district and working with some of our students who are really struggling and their families and doing so in such a compassionate and humane manner. And we are just so lucky to have such three outstanding um, employees in our district, and I want to pay tribute to them again tonight. So, on that note, do I have a motion to adjourn? Adjourn, Ryan. Second, Roderman. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Student trustee Bose. Thank you so much. The meeting is adjourned at eight twelve.